Hello there. So this is the uh, this is the birds and the bees chat. It's been coming up a lot in the last few months, but hardcore in the last few weeks with sessions and in conversations and all over the place. And I think the the linchpin of this whole conversation is addiction, um, physical addiction and emotional addiction. So, so all energy is sexual energy. I'm sure I've said it before, but you know, that's really important to clock that is all, all energy. Like, you know, you know what I mean by that? That's a bit of a grab all term. But it is all sexual energy in that the body will interpret it as sexual energy. <laughs> and we kind of listen to the body a lot and the mind. Perhaps more than we should, perhaps not enough sometimes. The body I'm thinking about, not the mind. Um, when you're moving any sort of energy in your body and you can get into the Asian setup, and I'm sure there are other setups, you know, they've got Jing and Ming and Zhang all this different stuff because of where they come from, how they work. They're very, very well categorized. Those systems, Ayurvedic would be the same. Great at categorizing things. The body, not so much. The body's going to read it all as sexual energy. All of it. And, you know, the male body is notorious for this. But, you know, the female one's pretty much at it as well. And so no matter what you're doing with energy, how you're moving it... If you're moving enough of it, your body is going to respond sexually to it. That's just how it is. It's just, it's just bad luck. You just have to deal with that. So it's really easy to get misconceptions around what you're doing and who you're doing it with. Because your body is sending out all these signals that are highly sexual to you. And probably to all the other bodies in the room. And... Everyone's picking up on it, and you're picking up on it, but it's just energy. Like, the body doesn't know the nuances of what's going on. And this leads to the second part, which is addiction. Like, the body will get habituated, and habits will turn into addictions. Some people are more prone to addictions than others. People who are... Empathic is like one of those dirty words, right? In the last 15 years, a bit like narcissist. Um, but people who feel more, you know, they, they cry at that point in the song or that scene in the movie or, or whatever. Like they just don't have a very good filter to block off when how those emotions hit and when they hit. If they're there, they're there. And you just your body's just got to hit it. It's just raw. It just comes in. There's no There's no real filter for that. Um, those are the people who are very prone to addiction because they're trying to numb out all the feeling that's coming in and they get addicted to the thing that they're using to numb out or go for a ride on it. You can be an adrenaline junkie, you can be a food junkie, you can be a alcohol junkie, you can be a psychedelic junkie, you can be a sex junkie, You're just looking, looking for a hit You're, and it's not flow state. You're not looking for a flow state hit, not usually. You're looking for that almost out of body, that alive, that that more real than real, or or that numb down, or you know whatever it is, an altered state. You're chasing the altered state, and when you get good at sex, which is like the whole package. I'm not just talking about intercourse, but when when that when you kind of know what that is, and you really start energetically working with that, I mean. That's an altered state. That's a really altered state. And you can start chasing that. And that's a that can be a bit of an issue. Especially if we're talking about um, this divine counterpart, sacred union, twin flame. There's another semi-dirty word. Um, but alien love bite, like you go, doesn't matter how you want to slice this. Super soldier, whatever. Like is it a trauma bonded pair or is it something else? The stronger the connection between the beings, the the stronger this energy is going to be, the more of a chance if one of them is out of balance or both of them, you're going to hit this issue around 
hunting that altered state. Because what you're doing is you're saying, well, I'm when I drink when I drink rum, it's thirty percent alcohol. But when I drink rum with you, it's eighty percent. And it's got a bit of a kick to it too. It's got a little bit of a on the end. Like that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with and if you're if you're someone who feels a lot, if you're someone who's prone to habitual or avoiding habitual and addictive states, mm, there's gonna be some issues there. And and that's something to look at in the way that you would look at any sort of addiction. Like we don't need to be gun psychologists. We don't need to be amazing to know that the more you feed an addiction, the worse it gets. But there are there are ample studies. The latest one that I could throw at you would be a study they did in prisons of violent criminals. And they thought if they put the VR headset on them, VR was going to be amazing. If they put the VR headset on them and threw them into a virtual reality and allowed them to commit violent crimes to the nature at which they'd been thrown in prison for, they'd get it out of their system and it'd rehabilitate them. But anyone who'd ever had anything to do with alcohol Alcoholics Anonymous or any of that stuff could have told them they were barking up the wrong tree completely. And guess what they found out? The more they let people commit violent crime in a virtual reality, the worse they got. The worse. So if you're in a partnership or a relationship or you're just one of those people who is just feeling stuff heightened, you're feeling you're, you've got a really, you're an empath. You're feeling these energies. They're really kicking back through the body. The haptic suit is, <laughs> or it's working. The VR headset is A1. It's really, really working. And you get into these sexual experiences. The further you go down that rabbit hole, the worse it's going to get. Physically, I mean. Like, the more you try to scratch that itch, the more you're going to keep scratching until you bleed, until you scratch a hole in yourself. That's how addiction works. It's a, it's a being. It's an entity. And it'll get you. And it works mostly through the body, but also through the emotional body. Not just the physical body, but it's, it's very emotional. Usually the emotions are at the root of it, but the physical is like this feedback loop between emotions, physical, emotions, physical. And it'll leave you in a mess. And it really doesn't matter. I'm only talking about the sexual side of it because it's coming up a lot at the moment, especially in the, in the divine union, you know, circles, the twin flame circles. It's coming up a lot, but it's coming up a lot anyway, everywhere. Because the volume's getting turned up like we said it would. I don't know how many videos you could go back of mine and you'll just keep seeing me say it again and again. The volume's getting turned up. The volume's getting turned up. Well, is it ever? The volume is really getting turned up now. And anything that's slightly glitchy, it's, it's going hardcore. And this will lead us straight into how you would weaponize this. How you could use this to your advantage, I mean, how someone could use you, the addicted person, with the really good feedback system, <laughs> perhaps also in a partnership with someone that heightens that feedback system, this is this divine pair thing, Whether and I, I don't care where you sit on that, I don't care whether you think it's real, I don't care whether you think it's a cult, I don't care whether you think it's all alien love bite, eros, god realm stuff, like it, it's a total witchcraft and hookup, cook up, hook up, cook up. It doesn't matter because the outcome is the same. These people are like, you know, they're in a feedback loop and they're feeding back on each other and everything is heightened and you can't, you can laugh about it if you've never been in it. But if you've been in it, it's no laughing matter. It is full on and it doesn't matter whether it's voice to skull and someone's manipulating you or it's how it was designed, and you jumped in here like that. Same, same. Whether it's a false one, a real one, whether there are no real ones, it's completely immaterial. This is what's happening to people. Many, 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 many people. Many more than you think. Many more than you've ever heard about. 
And this rolls right into trauma bonding. This rolls right into all of that stuff. Because you can use this heightened feedback system and physical and emotional addiction system that the body has set up, custom made. Like it's just like a loophole in the system. You can use that to trauma bond people to each other. You can use it to trauma bond people to groups and you can seal it with sexual energy because that is one of the strongest physical ways of playing this energy out. And then you can then you can do it on other realms and other levels, but I mean we're just dealing with what we can handle here right now is this physical aspect. And and really when you when you get when you play with the body enough energetically you really get to the point where it's like the physical is like the 2% on top. Like it's almost totally not necessary. It's great. It's, don't get me wrong. It is great. But you don't need it. You can, you can have the most amazing experience and never touch a person. So this, this physical feedback this itch that you can't scratch and and ask an alcoholic you cannot scratch this itch it will never go away the only way you can scratch it is to find what's at the back of it probably a trauma definitely a misconception probably a whole bunch of them and deal with them because once you remove those misconceptions and or trauma from your system you like there'll be no itch to scratch it just won't compare there'll be no compulsion anymore it will not compel you but if you can set someone up with these misconceptions and maybe the odd trauma or two then they're compelled and then it's really easy like to bait that trap when you've got a person right on the edge of this addiction thing and they they can't see the wood for the trees like there are so many ways you can bait that trap then. So many. You can you can just mess it up for them. And so that's a blind spot. And that's a blind spot that's worth checking. Like, where are you addicted? Are you addicted to physical touch? Like that. Altered state physical touch I'm talking about. Are you addicted to food? Are you addicted to liquids? Are you addicted to alcohol? Are you addicted to... Being in an altered state and the substances that get you there. Are you addicted to social media? A lot, like any of this stuff. Any of this stuff can become an addiction. An addiction is a weak spot and a weak spot will be used against you to get you out of the game. Like, and when I say the game, I mean the game that you're here to sort out, which is probably getting out of here. Like, not we're not on the hamster wheel here. This is This is not what we came for. We came for other stuff. But are you are you potentially getting sidelined here and there through addictive behavior that's hiding in the blind spot? Because and you just won't go and look at it. You you've got to be able to check that stuff because it's really insidious. And the blind spot has a habit of building up and just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and you don't know it's there. But it's, it's really becoming part of it. And so this, this energy movement, this sexual energy piece, it's really big. Because it's at, the, it's at the foundation of all this addictive behavior, is this wanting to connect, a longing to connect or disconnect and get into an altered state. Either way, to get out of the body can be an addiction. To get into the body can be an addiction. People cut themselves. So they can really get in the body and feel it. People people do whatever they can to get out of the body. Like it's it's all the same behavior. And it creates massive blind spots. And these are the spots that are coming up now. These sort of blind spots. And so I invite you to check that out. And see what you can find. Alright. Much love.